These days, scrolling through at Instagram is like driving into a parking lot. You're following a lot of different people, each of them with different cars, and if any car is better than yours, you get a little bit pissed off. You see artists like Victor Taito posting warm-ups that apparently take him a few minutes and you instantly feel disgusted with yourself for your incompetence and lack of sheer knowledge of art. And when he posts a final image, I guess it's time to throw the rope across the ceiling fan or jump through the nearest window available. Thus, this leads us to our artist of the day, whose name I cannot pronounce due to my country of origin. But further in this video, I'll try my best to pronounce his name. Ladies and gentlemen, drag your seats closer as I give to you the one, the only. What's going on guys? Back with another video and you know how we do it. First things first, we give shout outs to amazing talented artists that deserve it. So first person I'm looking at right now is Chig Sammy Khalid. His art is really fantastic. I've just been looking at his page for about two days now. I think I found his art. Someone shared his art, possibly Braku or someone last week. And I've been following his art. It's really fantastic. Has a lot of nice paintings on his page. You can definitely check him out on Instagram. Really fantastic. If you take a look at some of his studies, you might learn a thing or two. But yeah, make sure you give him a follow. Show him some love. Next person is Moatazat. His name is Muataz Mustafa. He has a really, really amazing page, some nice studies as well. He's basically doing a lot of headshots, trying to understand how to paint portraits. I can see this one that looks like uh, he followed a tutorial from Eric Anthony. Yo, Eric, Eric, come here, man. Oh, wow, he can't hear me right from Germany. Anyway, next person on this list is EJ Thompson. That ain't your middle name. You, this needs to be your middle name, EJ. And then the last person we have today is Tori. He's an illustrator. His Instagram is Tomboy Reflections. Go check him out. Fantastic work. I really love his watercolor studies. Man, I wish I could do some watercolor, but I can't. So maybe later on, that will be something I'll look into. But yeah, these are really talented artists. And I pray you just go out of your way. Show them some love. Just give them a follow on Instagram. And if you want to shout out yourself, you know how we do it. The first pin comment on this this video is where you leave your Instagram handle and you might get a shout out in the next video so make sure you leave a comment down below with your Instagram handle in the pinned comment and leave a like on this video and subscribe to the channel if you're new here. So the artist we're going to be talking about today is someone you've probably seen his work if you haven't I don't know where you're living probably under a rock I'm not going to use that metaphor again or irony or whatever it's called I've used it before in a previous video but his name is His name is okay. His name is Wolop. Did I get it right? Anyways, everywhere I've been seeing his name, it always is this same W L O P. So I've been pronouncing it Wolop. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but that's how I've been pronouncing that name. But just in case you didn't know, his real name is Wang Ling, and he's a really fantastic artist. I don't know if he's a male. But I think he's a fantastic artist and if you just take a look at any of his works, his lighting is always spot on. His lighting is always just crisp and he loves to use a lot of rays in his work to separate his characters from his background. And there's always so much detail and the detail just drives you to looking at the, where he wants your eyes to focus on in his images. So that's something we're going to take a look at today. And the piece we're going to be looking at actually is this one. Uh, it's a really fantastic piece. I also love this one from him. He all his work is just really fantastic, and he also has a YouTube channel where he shows processes of his work. This one really blew my mind. It's something that I don't I don't know how many years it will take me to attain this kind of level with my art. But anyways, we're just going to be taking a look at how he created. Um, pretty much i'm just going to be breaking down this image talking about the lighting and that's what we're going to be looking at today so make sure you stick around to the end of the video and let's do this so first off i've already opened the image in photoshop and from what i can tell there's a lot going on in this image i mean just basically the thought process about this image most of it is just there's a lot of implied details in the image so that's something that i noticed a lot of professional top level artists do they some of them really detail everything to the max but most times they love to imply things so when you look at it from far you think it's a lot of tiny little details but when you zoom closer you see that they just implied a lot of things and that's what masters from the early days did a lot so 
First things we can notice is the way he has set up the lighting of this image is just really fantastic. So first off, he has this shaft of lights hitting across her face and that just, it just blew my mind immediately I saw this piece. So this shaft of light is usually called when there are little holes or little spacings blocking where a light source is coming from so as you can see right here he has shown you that there's some windows or there's some openings right here where the light is coming in through and that's where one particular light source is coming in and hitting her right here so i know a lot of people just love to do uh you love learning about lighting on my channel and you might want to try out uh doing something like this where you have some shafts of light just on the character hitting different places just to draw interest to different places where you want the eye to look in your character as you can see he has created another shaft right here where uh, her shoulder plate is and this same shaft is just hitting across just showing some lights on the necklace showing some lights on all the other areas that have detail on her costume you can see the same thing right here on this globe looking thin and then just some shafts right in the background just to light up some parts around here kind of to pop her silhouette out right here this shape of her hair make it pop a little bit so that's why it has this light right here and also what you can see is this light is actually going back up bouncing back right here into the nails and then why this is shining right here is because the light for this kind of material the light comes in this way and then it reflects on the surface of whatever is right here so that's how crystals work you might get some lights right here at the top but most of the light is going to be right here because it comes in and then it reflects and refracts around right inside the crystal that's why you have lights right here uh, shining up at the bottom and what really amazes me the most is the way he uses his atmosphere right here in all his images but in this one it's so good let me take this off so you can see character is separated from the background with this little haze i don't know if you guys see it but you should there's this haze that's separating the character and what this happens is how this happens is when the light comes in from uh all these little shafts that are here and there's dust or there's any mist or fog in the room the fog that's right here in the part of the light is going to get lit and that's why you always have shafts like this if you uh want to see how it's done you can watch any music video or any um film setup they always do this a lot where they create shafts of light and then they spray in a little bit of fog a little bit of mist into the atmosphere to create shafts like this so that's what he loves to use to separate his characters and it's something that anyone can use to separate your character from the background as you can see right here he used it so you can see this hand is popping right here but there's still a shaft that's going right behind the shoulder right behind uh the, the forearm hitting right here the shoulder and the face and all that so that incidentally makes this hand pop right here from this other object this all the background all the other elements that are around it and it's just really a really fantastic uh tool you can use in your digital art to make sure that you're separating your character from your background and just to make sure that you're, you're making your images pop now another thing you can notice from just taking a look at his work is he also has some reflected lights hitting the character from kind of the top lighting her face lighting the other places that are supposed to be in shadow and then lighting like her arm and her forearm right here now this is probably going to be the ambient light that's in the room because if you have bright light sources like this hitting objects hitting um areas in this room is always going to bounce around so this light comes here it hits the surface and then it bounces around the room and begins to light up other places in the room you can always try this yourself close a room up open maybe a tiny window just let some lights in and you see how that small light that you let in hits uh hits a surface especially if that surface is white or if it's bright if it hits that surface it's going to just scatter around and light up everywhere but if you have a black surface that surface might not be able to reflect that much light so this is a really fantastic lighting setup anyone can use in your work i think you guys can actually just practice doing studies like this 
um just practice doing studies like this just to see how this work and this particular lighting setup is called uh dappled lighting it always happens when light comes through trees and it looks kind of like this where the light comes through trees and is piercing through the openings of between the leaves and then it's leaving uh shadows of the leaves on the ground and some spots where light is coming through it's, it really looks really good when done like by professional photographers and artists you can see this is a portrait of dappled lighting hitting a person it's it's really um it's really good it's really sweet you can try it out see how it works so um let me just open my trash art and this is my trash art and uh pretty much i'll show you how i created this kind of same dappled lighting setup in my own image so first off i have First up, I have this. This is where I do my initial lighting. I love to just do it like this in grayscale. Um, it just helps me see the values properly and know uh, pretty much where my main light source is going to be. Then further on, when I go into the image and keep working, bringing it up, I can then uh, create different other lighting setups. So first off, this is just white and this is a gray, um, color nothing fancy just gray right here and then i create another layer above it and i just um painting where i want the light to hit with white that's that's it that is just it and then this layer is actually underneath my flat layer and then i hide it so essentially what i do is after i've created my flats later on i just come and click the uh click the lights so this where my light is i just click it and then i inverse the selection with command shift i and that should be Control shift i on um windows and then i use this selection for the shadows and then i apply it on where my um flat colors are so that's pretty much how i um built this up every other thing is just rendering and rendering and pretty much rendering so I'm just trying to take off all the layers so you can see exactly what I did. So first off, you can see these are just the um, pretty shitty flats. And then the next thing is that shadow that I first did. The same thing I told you. Selected the selected the shadow from the other first one that I did, the grayscale. I filled it here put it on multiply use a brown color and then i kind of made it darker a little bit to emphasize where this light source is coming from then the next thing i did was i created another layer set it on color dodge use like an orange reddish tone just to increase how intense this uh light is that's hitting her and then i just rendered in just a little bit of kind of the details on the materials the surfaces and then i started painting in the shadows uh painting the reflected light coming into the shadows so you can see just some reflected light if you have lights like this hitting uh, bright lights like this hitting a surface or a person is always going to bounce up back into the face so that's what i did and i think at this point i turned i started uh painting in all this fancy light i know you guys love doing this but it's just really fancy lighting so uh, it's pretty much all of these are just done on color dodge screen color dodge linear dodge layers and it's just pretty easy to do and then i then painted in a little bit of uh ambient lights coming in from the top so i'm assuming she's kind of in a in a dark tree forest region something like that and then there's some light seeping in from spaces there around the tree some ambient light and then i just painted that in a little kept on rendering some more details and um where the light is hitting and then made some areas darker added a gradient map at the top just to switch the colors a bit and then a curve adjustment layer and pretty much that's it that's how i built up the image just from taking studies from looking at uh Wolop's work and essentially just doing it in my own style 
pretty much the same thing pretty basic nothing really fancy here nothing fancy happening anyone can do this everyone should be able to do this so make sure you're just doing studies of your lighting studies from movies do a lot of movie studies movie stills that's what i did a lot i did a lot of movie stills and then i did some lighting with just um fruit on my desk just keeping fruit on your desk use that to study keep fruit on your desk study study how the light is hitting it you can also um get a small toy that always works just get a small toy put it on your desk then get a desk lamp and use that light to pretty much build up the lighting of your toy so i don't know you guys can always uh get toys from amazon or wherever and you can even get a mannequin that also works as well and you can use that as reference for when you're building up the lighting in your image so say you're trying to work on an image and you don't know how to use the lighting or to create the lighting you can just set up your toy and use that as a reference to guide your image another thing you can always do is to take photos of yourself take photo reference that i did a lot of and i still do that now let's take photo reference of yourself in whatever pose you want to do and then you light it up with with the intention of how you want to um, create the lighting setup in your own image how you want your lighting setup to be in your own image just set it up that way and uh how do i even do it so i have these lights that i use in my house for when i'm making videos i can actually i sometimes use those to um, light myself when i'm trying to make images but i know most of you guys don't have lights like that so you can just maybe get a bulb use that or use a phone just something you always have to be creative just use something be creative with your lighting and take photo reference and use that in your work and that will pretty much help you get closer to your goal of becoming a better artist so i hope this video helped someone i hope it's helped you maybe understand how uh dappled lighting works creates creating um shafts of light in your work and all the good stuff all the good stuff so if you enjoyed the video just please leave it a like it helps um this video rank in the youtube search so other people can find it and go their art as well and then subscribe to my youtube channel if you're new here if this is your first time nice to meet you i'm mohammed you can leave your name down in the comment section if you're new here and i will see you guys in the next video peace Ride or die, ride or die, ride or die, ride or die, ride or die.